Dialog Engine is an online soft proofing tool which allows you to review and approve high resolution files without downloading the file or requiring a fast internet connection. It's HTML5 based so there's no additional software that needs to be installed on the client machines and it's both SWAP and Fogger certified for colour accuracy. Now it's available as a module inside ES which is how we're going to access it today or you can also purchase it as a standalone applet so you can integrate it into your current system. It handles a variety of files including PDFs, image files and office documents and today I'm going to be looking at a PDF. So if I log into, into the ES system and then I'll navigate through to my file that I'm going to be looking at and I'll just launch that. You'll notice down the left hand side are thumbnails of all the files that I've selected. I happen to open a multi-page PDF so all the pages are displayed down here and I can use the thumbnails to jump to a particular page. On the right we have our annotations palette and as we begin to mark up the document you'll see all those appear over there. And then in the centre we have our selected document and a variety of tools available to us. So you can see in the centre what PDF we're looking at, what revision it is and what page we're looking at. So the first tool we're going to look at is the annotate tool. You have the option of either using a sticky note style annotation or a proofreading mark. So for now I'm just going to make a note over here. You can see the user at the time and date of who done it. You can see that note has now appeared in the annotations palette on the right hand side. So from there the users can come in, they can reply to notes. We can enable checkboxes to say that something's been done, or they can sort and filter those by the style of notes that they might be. We then have the drawing tool, and you have the option of either a freehand sketch tool, a rectangle, or a circle. So here I'm just going to scribble over what I want to change. And again, I could add some additional information using the annotations palette. I then have the text tool, so I can extract any of the text out of the document on either a single word, a line or a whole paragraph and I can just highlight the text that I want and click on it to extract that. I can make some changes here so if I remove some words or change some we can quickly see what's been removed, what's been changed and on hover it will say what the word previously was. We then have the measurement tools so from here we can check particular length of the file. We can check angles and we can check area coverage whether that's based on a square or a freeform polygon that you can draw over the document. If we use the eye icon here that will load up any of the technical information about the file so including the document box, trim box, all the sort of usual stuff you expect from your PDF and if you hover over that you can see where those are defined on the page. We can also use this here as a quick way to navigate and pan around the document. We have the option to go to full screen mode if we want to and we can also view the layers. So we can view layers on PDF files and also on PSDs, layered TIFFs and Illustrator files. It's so very handy if you don't have a copy of Photoshop available. We can just tab that down and turn off the relevant layers so we can easily see what's on what layer on the PDF. We can then view the channels that make up that document, including any spot colours that might be on there, and then turn off one or a selection of those channels. I have a densitometer tool. So if we want to make sure that it's the exact colour, maybe you've got some brand guidelines that need to be hit, we can quickly view the reading there and again turn that into a note so we can capture that information. Down the bottom we have our zoom tool and we can quickly zoom in, pan around the document and it loads very quickly. This is actually rendering the PDF on the fly every time you zoom in. We have our user preferences here. We have the rotate tool, so this is particularly handy on packaging work. You need to be able to quickly rotate around to read the text. 
um, as default it does 90 degree increments but if you want to do smaller increments you can just do that in here or mirror it horizontally or vertically. In regards to the view options, um, you have the option like what I'm using now where it's viewing the PDF with the trim marks included. If I want to view those without, I can just change the mode there. Or if you're working on a brochure or a magazine, you might want to view the two pages side by side and pan through like you would on a real magazine. We then have the revisions. So like I said, we're looking at version two of this document. If I view this revision button here, I can then go back and view a previous version of the file and look at the previous annotations on there. Or I can actually do a comparison on the two files. So this will overlay the two documents and will highlight in green any areas that have changed between the two files, enabling you to quickly see what's changed between those two versions. And here we have the option of setting it as either a tolerance for a physical change or we can set this to a delta E value for a colour metric comparison as well. And we can choose whether that blinks or whether that stays sat static. And now we can easily see that some text has changed over here and some of this has changed in our image. In addition to the analyse mode, we have the overlay mode. This is a kind of old fashioned way of working of putting two PDFs or two pieces of paper on top of each other and doing the flick test. So by using the bar in the middle, I can just swipe between the two and see the changes that have been made. So you can see that some words have dropped off on our text and the clouds have disappeared from my image up the top. I also have the option of blinking between the two different versions. So quickly toggling between the two files and seeing what's changed. And then finally, I have the side-by-side -side mode. And these two files will stay in sync with each other. So as soon as I zoom in on one, it will zoom in on them both. So I can very easily compare what's been changed between the two files. And then depending on our workflow, we can enable the approve and reject buttons and then move that on to another part in the workflow or a different approval cycle.